Hi and welcome to Joe's DIY. Uh, today I have this Technics uh, RSTR265. Cool little thing. Um, this is a product of Japan. Which is one of the reasons I picked it up. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, I mean, it's got a bunch of other features. I mean, you could add a control remote control. You can uh, synchro edit, which probably means you could hook it up to an amplifier that's also Technics and uh, have it uh, record off uh, vinyl or have it record off CDs. And then you have your typical light in and light out. Um, obviously, no uh, digital or coaxial outs on this machine. So uh, the reason I picked it up is because, I mean, it was in decent shape um, and I know that it's they're well made um but the problem here and you can see kind of like the little lights and display there the problem here is that um when i got this tape player by the way i've already kind of given it a good cleaning what i noticed is that it doesn't play uh moving forward so this is auto reverse obviously but if you can see here this is cassette deck two it's set up to uh reverse so uh it won't play like say for example if i want to play forward you can see that it's just making some noise and it's not really working right. So, so yeah, and then it stops. So, um, yeah, so it's not really working properly, uh, probably because of the, uh, the belts. What I'm planning to do today is giving it a good, uh, belt replacement. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and show you, uh, what the gears in there and everything and the wheels are in there and everything uh and i'll also try attempt to, to replace uh tech deck two deck one i mean so uh and you can see i mean it's got some really nice features there i mean i like the, the little display here you got your dolby b your dolby c you got your synchro start button um if you wanted to uh, i guess record from one tape to another um and then you also have your auto reverse uh, modes. Uh, so I guess you can do uh, one play over or you can loop it over and over again. I'm not sure what this does exactly, but I'm sure it's some type of looping. Uh, you could definitely adjust the recording level on the tape player. And I think, I believe this one has two speeds to record. It's got a one speed and a two speed. And uh, this is the deck number one, which is just for playback. Okay, so I got most of the screws off. Uh, there's just two on each side. One there, one there. So I will go ahead and just... Try to open this without breaking it. So that is off. All right, so those are the mechanisms for each one uh so right off the bat i don't see this as a very complicated uh belt replacement uh from what i can see i mean of course i have to see if i'm able to remove this because this might be in my way but i can see that um there's one belt there one belt in there and this is one belt so we got two belts here so my biggest worry is probably this little metal piece right here so I can access this belt and this belt. This belt looks like it's uh it's definitely not a flat belt. I can see that it's got a yeah. And that's really, really loose in there. So yeah, they're both pretty loose. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna try first. I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, this screw and let me see if there's anything else to touch. I think this screw should probably go next. That screw. And hopefully that'll help me, allow me to detach this. Just can't really see if there's any other screws that might get in my way. So it's always a crapshoot with tape players. I mean, there's no diagram to kind of help you or explain to you how to disassemble this. So you kind of have to just you know trust your instincts so i'm gonna try removing this that screw and that screw and see how we how well we do with that okay so in theory so that worked so in theory i should be able to take out this wheel 
and uh, replace this belt and then try to figure out a way how to loop this belt. This is a rounded belt. So I'm gonna try to see if I have something that works on this. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna try this one and I'm gonna try to pull out uh, this wheel. Hopefully I can reach out for the other belt. Yeah, that's pretty loose. So Okay, so just something of note that I just noticed. So this belt is going through another wheel that's behind this wheel right here. So all I gotta do is disattach, detach this belt from the wheel and it should just come out because this is this wheel um, easily comes out through here so I should just be able to pull that one out so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that now so I just figured out how to pull this wheel out so I'm just gonna pull out the other belt and that just comes right out okay so now the the true test comes and uh, see if I can find a belt that I can replace this with that might be a little tighter. If I can't find another round one, I'll probably just throw this into the mic and see if I can get it to shrink a little bit. Um, I I learned this trick from V West Life. Uh, if you put uh, belts uh, in some boiling water, uh, they can shrink and you might be able to get them a little bit tighter uh, and then reinstall them. Uh, I figured this would be worth it to do it on this one just because I don't think uh, this belt is that was that difficult to take out okay so here's where we're at um so unfortunately i looked through my pile of these uh wide belts and this one might work but the problem is that it's rather thick i mean i'd have to s sit here and maybe cut it which i don't really have a study steady hand to do that um i mean i'm sure someone out there might be able to do it but i don't really want to risk you know assembling this whole thing and not letting it work so as far as replacing this belt i mean i don't think i'll be able to i don't think i have a replacement right now and then i looked through uh my baggies of belts and i did find uh this belt but this is from uh, another um another cassette deck that i fixed up uh that had uh an extra belt that I ordered uh, but it's just a little bit too big for this one I mean I mean it sort of matches but this is obviously just a little bit more uh, wider so I think the only choice that I have now is trying to throw these in a little a couple of uh, boiling water and see if we can get it to shrink a little bit um, I'm gonna go ahead and measure them before I throw them into the hot water just to kind of see if there's any difference uh, so I'm going to go get it, my caliper and uh, see if I can measure that. So unfortunately, my battery is going dead on my uh, caliper. But you can see right there that says uh, 75.94 millimeters. This is without stretching it too much. So let's go ahead and measure the white belt and see where that's at. Okay, so without stretching it too much, there is some slack there. I got 113.5251 millimeters. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in boiling water and see if we can get them uh, to shrink a little bit. We'll see. Okay, so uh, I'm back from boiling uh, these belts. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure them now. Let's see. Okay, so here is the shorter belt, the thin one, the round one. And we got 74.11, which is around one millimeter of shrunkage. So, I mean, I don't know that's good that that's going to help at all, but it's something, you know, it shrunk a little bit. Let's try the other one. So here we got a significant amount of shrunkage. Uh, I think we're, we were at 113, now we're at 108. So this one, there was a significant amount of shrunkage, so that might be able to help uh, the wheel. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall these and see if we can get uh, the drives to work correctly. So what I like to start off, by doing is uh, this is kind of a layered process so you want to start with the wheel that's farthest deep into the mechanism so I put that uh, thin belt that round belt uh, that's uh, in there with that force first wheel now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shove uh, this wheel back into that hole right there and I'm gonna try to use some tweezers to uh, go ahead and try to put the belt right back into this little wheel here and uh, hopefully that won't cause me more trouble than uh, I I foresee it causing me. So let's go ahead and try that. 
So as you can see, the belt's already back in there and it's already back in the back of the wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and just push it in. And that is already put back together. Um, so all I actually, what I ended up doing is I ended up putting it uh, on this wheel first instead of uh, putting it on this wheel. So I put it in this wheel first and I pulled it out and then I grabbed the tweezers and I kind of uh, pushed it into the wheel so now it's in there um, and I can feel this there's a lot it's a lot stronger now um, as far as the the friction against the wheel so uh, that should work a little bit better now even though like all I did is boiled it for a little bit um, and if you're wondering about the boiling that I did on this I mean I just grabbed the cup uh, just a re regular coffee mug um, I, I went into uh, one of my water um, dispensers that uh, gives you hot water for your coffee. And I put the, the, the belts in there and then I put them in the microwave for another four minutes. And that seemed to work uh, pretty well in shrinking them. Uh, well, as far as I can tell right now. Um, so let's go ahead and try to put the other one back. This The other one might be a little bit more complicated because it has to go into the motor. So I am going to try to... Uh, Put this together as best i can i mean i don't know it's i have to kind of figure out and then i'll come back and explain how i did it okay so this was a little bit more difficult but i kind of found a little trick as you can see that's all set up now just gonna have to roll it a little bit just to make sure it stays into place okay that well, looks like it's gonna stay in place okay so what i did is um I started off by putting the belt under this wheel here and what I ended up doing I ended up using this little uh, piece of plastic sticking out from here and I hooked the belt there and then I got the little uh, retainer uh, back in there and then as I was trying to close it out I tried to wiggle the belt and I don't know if you can see it there but I tried to wiggle the belt back in its place you can see right there so the belt is now uh attached to the actual motor of the cassette tech so that's attached right there so that's the way i was able to get this uh, assembled back on and from my from what i can feel i mean there's definitely more tension now and more tension there so um i will definitely see uh test this out first and see how well uh, it plays uh, before i, I uh, completely reassemble this and now I'll also repeat the process on this guy right here on the on the right side. Okay, so I got my tape uh, right back in here and I'm gonna now test it. Okay, so that looks like it's running smooth enough. Okay, so let's see the reverse. Okay, no problems there. So it looks like the shrinking the belts worked rather well. I'm not getting any problems with this getting stuck when I do the auto reverse. So it looks like it's working out perfectly well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, repeat the process with this one and hopefully I can get this to work uh, completely. So I'm going to go ahead and, tr and record uh, this side as well, just to see if there's any other problems or things that uh, are different about the this other side. Uh, the mechanisms look almost identical. Um, I don't see much of a difference. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try to take this apart now, and hopefully uh, I can re easily remove uh, both belts the same way. This little brace or bracket uh, came right off just like the other one, except... I got a bunch of other cables uh, kind of getting in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the belts and try to see if I can wiggle this bracket out. And if I can, then I'll just have to work with it somehow. Uh, but I pretty much see that it's going to come out the same way. So I'll go ahead and boil these belts and I'll be right back to reassemble. And just for comparison, this one uh, is 76.48 millimeters. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wider belt. 
measuring about 113.33 millimeters. So um, we'll see uh, what they measure after I will go ahead and uh, boil them for a little bit. All right, so I'm back now and uh, I'm ready to measure these. Uh, I put these in for a little longer, uh, so let's see how much they shrunk up. So I got roughly the same thing. I think this is uh, about one millimeter shorter now, which is good. Let's go ahead and try the larger belt. Okay, so this is at 108. So this is definitely uh, much shorter now. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, reattach uh, the belts and uh, hopefully it won't be too difficult. All right, so I probably will be using the same process. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the belt uh, first to here, and then we'll figure out how to mount it onto that wheel back there. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to remove this bracket. Um, there's This cable is attached, and uh, I'm sure that if I tried hard enough, I could probably get it removed, uh, but I don't wanna spend too much time trying to figure out how to get that out and also risk breaking it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to uh, move my way in here, uh, hopefully without disrupting the mechanism too much and then hopefully reattach both belts uh, without uh, breaking anything. So uh, here goes nothing. So it looks like that wasn't very difficult at all, um, especially now since I kind of knew what I was doing. Uh, as you can see, the belt is uh, reattached there. And what I did is I put the belt in here first. I had to move the wheel a little bit back, uh, but I, I put the belt through uh, to the back wheel and then I pulled it up uh, with, again, my handy tweezers here. And uh, I was able to pull the belt back and reattach it to that wheel right there. So now comes the one that might be a little bit more challenging, which should be the bigger belt. Uh, just because I have to attach it to the motor and these two wheels here. So uh, I'll probably use the same method. Uh, I can probably use the little latch that's uh, right there. And uh, hopefully that'll help me and make it a lot easier for me to slip uh, that back into the motor. So here goes nothing. So at least part of my plan is working. I have the belt uh, attached to the wheel and I have it latched onto that little piece of plastic. So the next step is trying to ease this mortar here back into its proper slot and hopefully the belt can just pop right in there uh, with the help of some tweezers. So here goes again. Okay, so through the use of some hand yoga, <laughs> I was able to uh, pop that belt right back into that motor and back into the wheel and now this is uh for the most part ready to go so i do notice that there's a little bit more tension on the belt there and there as well as there so now it's time to plug it back in and see how well it does uh with the tapes um i've had this problem before believe it or not with another tape player i wouldn't play forward it would only do the reverse plane um if that's the case uh then I might just have, it might be a mechanical problem that might not have anything to do with the belts because I've experienced that before. I could go buy new belts on this and, and see maybe if I got a, a more snug fit on those wheels and it might, it might work. But, uh, you know, uh, I really don't want to spend money, you know, 14 to $20 uh, on new belts for uh, an old tape deck like this because it's basically what the tape that cost me. I mean, the tape that cost me about 20 bucks. So uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can get this, this to work. If not, then I, I think I could just be content with just doing the, uh, the reverse plane on this deck since that works just fine. So uh, here goes nothing. Hopefully uh, both uh, sides work. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I have tape uh, deck uh, two playing in the forward position. So let's go ahead and see if that worked. No, it didn't work. So that wheel is still stuck there. Yeah, and what it'll do is it'll just go into auto reverse. Yeah, it's just not, it's futile. Let me see. Let me try the other way. So I went ahead and flipped the tape to see if uh, I could play it forward. Yeah, and see if we get no movement there.
See, and now the, this will move. So as far as I can tell, uh, they, uh, deck two will only play on the reverse side, um, which is a shame because, I mean, I wish I would play in the forward position. But I've had this experience with these old Technics uh, players. Uh, I don't know exactly what happens inside of them that break. But uh, for some reason, you know, you uh, if it's out of reverse or if it's an older deck like this, from probably from the early 90s or uh, late to late 1980s, um, the forward position for some reason tends to break down. So I don't know. Um, and again, I mean, I can try it, but, you know, we get no movement there. See, it's the wheel stuck. And I have to kind of stop it because uh, if I don't, yeah. So if I don't stop it, it'll start just eating the tape, which is something that we definitely don't want. But, you know, in the reverse position, it looks like it's working just fine. Uh, okay, well, that is basically it. Let's go ahead and see if we can uh, hear some sounds on this, and then uh, we'll finish up this video. Okay, so uh, this is the amp that I'm choosing to uh, demo the tape player. This is uh, a Pioneer SA730. I also got the uh, Stereo Tuner TX530 attached to it. Um, and I got a couple of uh, Yamaha speakers that I recently acquired. Uh, these models are the NSA636, uh, maximum 140 watts, 8 ohms. Uh, pretty nice size of these speakers. Uh, definitely, and if I can take the grill off so you can kind of see what's going on underneath. And this is a nice size speaker uh, and pretty powerful too. Um, not sure if this is still made in Japan. Uh, probably not. So I think it's in the back might have said made in USA. Yep, these are made in the USA. So that for me, for past experience, I mean, that usually means that the box is made in the usa or assembled in the usa but these parts are probably chinese or malaysia if i had to you know give my best guess but you know they do sound okay um and i don't have any pioneer speakers out here to demo so i'm just going to use the yamahas uh i did get a chance to hear uh this tape deck uh before uh i put in the ben sound uh because as you know I don't use uh, any music that's going to get flagged for copyright. So I got my Ben Sound uh, tape there. So, and yes, I have to put it in backwards because this tape player only plays in reverse uh, since the other way is just not working. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at this. I know that this uh, song has been played a lot on my channel, but uh, I don't have, I haven't recorded another uh, Ben Sound tape uh, with royalty free music yet so we're just gonna have to bear with this for today okay so let's go ahead and play it and i do have it set to uh dolby b bias so that way it'll play the way i recorded it we'll get a feel for the sound
decided to go ahead and try and check the second deck to just to make sure that that one's playing okay. I'm gonna pull this out. This one I could play forward or backwards because I confirmed that I can get both sides to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cassette in the right place. I would just play play. As you can see. So I played this track just to make sure that I couldn't hear any warble. And as you can hear, I mean, there's not any warble. So I think the piano kind of makes it very clear to hear that warble. So I, I didn't hear any. So I think we're good as far as with the uh, tightening of those belts. So here are my final thoughts. I think these techniques, uh, these Technics cassette tape uh, decks are really nice uh, if you can find them uh, out in the wild, uh, fully functioning, of course, not with the problem that I had with this deck here. Um, but they're really nice as far as the quality. I mean, those wheels were made out of aluminum. Usually, if you open up something from Technics uh, from the 90s that was made in Malaysia, you'll see that these parts are usually plastic. So, I mean, you're getting good quality here with the main Japan ones. Um, I mean, the, the sound is really good. I mean, I think that's one of the things that convinced me to want to buy uh, one of these types of decks again because the sound that you get from these decks is a really good sound, um, really clear, really crisp, really loud. Uh, sometimes when I put the bias on other tape decks, I notice that the quality of the sound goes down a little bit. I don't, I don't know why that is, but, you know, this is uh, really loud and uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's the tape heads or anything like that for the Technics, but you get a really good sound um, from these old tape decks. Uh, and the other thing too that I think is probably a good thing is that it's very easy to assemble and if you want to replace it, the, the belts, it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, uh, it, there was a bit of a trick to getting those belts back in there, but you didn't really have to take apart, you know, like the front part, because some, some tape decks require you to take off this front part and disassemble the actual assembly or mechanism in there. I mean, it's just it could just be a big hassle for removing these tape uh, belts, but this is relatively easy just because of how easy the, the wheels are exposed and how you can actually just get in there and clean them or, you know, replace the belts. So uh for now i think i'm just gonna leave the deck as is i'm not gonna probably buy any new belts for it um but uh i'm just gonna enjoy it as is and uh, i also like this little uv meter that is right there uh displaying so um that's basically it for for my video today i hope you enjoyed it and thank you to all my new subscribers uh we're over 200 now and i'm very excited that uh we've doubled uh since i started you know working on this channel so uh thank you very much for all those new subscribers and thank you for liking and writing comments on my videos i really appreciate that and i try to reply to all the comments uh as quick as i can sometimes it takes time because i have a very busy schedule as well but uh nonetheless I, i'm very appreciative and uh thank you so much for watching this video and uh have a wonderful day